So like all small shops, I never seem to have enough room. There's always stuff on the floor. And for me, it's my cameras and my lights when I'm trying to make a video. But there's other situations where stuff is in the way. I'm gonna put together some type of crane, gantry, I'm not exactly sure what, up on the ceiling. The bulk of the build is gonna be using this stuff here called Unistrut or Super Strut. You can get it at the bigger hardware stores, a plumbing supply house, or an electrical supply house. It's normally used in industrial applications, but it's pretty inexpensive and it's very sturdy and that's what I'm looking for. I didn't want to get involved in trying to make something out of plywood, building I-beams and trolleys and all this other stuff. I think this is going to be easier to work with, stronger and in the long run less expensive than building something out of plywood. Whenever you're working with metal, make sure you have a good pair of gloves. I really like these things. They have some kind of rubber neoprene coating on them. Keeps you from getting your hands really greasy and getting cut. Here I'm going to be putting a bolt through the end of the unistrut so that way when I do put the trolleys on they're not going to roll right off the end of them. So I'm just going to pre-drill a couple of holes and then I'll be able to put the bolt through to stop the trolleys from running off the end. The holes in the unistrut are pretty big and I'm going to be using these cabinet screws to attach it to the ceiling and even though they have a washer head it's still too small for the holes so I grab some fender washers and I'll use those underneath the head of the screw to screw this up to the ceiling. I have my little magnet up on the ceiling to let me know where the joists are and just take your time with this and I'm putting a screw into every joist just to make sure it's good and secure. I'm trying out this diamond metal cutting blade. The benefit of this versus a fiber blade is it doesn't get smaller as it wears like a fiber blade does. It's going to stay the same diameter. One thing I found out real quick when using this blade when it's new is it really grabs onto the metal and it bounced around a little bit. So if you're going to try one of these blades out, definitely put the handle on the side so you don't uh, bruise yourself. When you're done cutting, don't forget to file and get rid of those burrs so you don't cut yourself later. And here I'm just putting a hole in the end of the other piece of Unistrut for the other end of the track. When you're putting this second piece up, if you need to have longer than 10 feet, you need to have something to give you a straight line reference. I'm using a laser here just because I happen to have one, but you could snap a chalk line on the ceiling or something like that. You just need to really take your time and make sure this stuff is nice and straight because it's going to affect the way it operates. Now that I have all my screws in and tight, I'm just double checking with the laser to make sure this side of the track is nice and straight. Now I'm putting up the other side and the distance from the first track isn't critical. It's just important that the spacing between the two tracks is the same all the way up and down the length of it. And again, I'm using the laser to finish putting up the second piece on the other side. Just want to make sure it's all straight. This is the hardware I'm going to use to make the rolling tracks. A bunch of roll pins, some 3 8 nuts, a bunch of skateboard bearings, and some angle brackets. Could use angle iron, but this has holes already pre-drilled. I just need to make them a little bit larger. I think this will be easier to work with. And this is the little trolley that I'm going to make with all this hardware. You're probably thinking why go through making all that? Well, let me show you. Here's the end of the Unistrut and here's the trolley I made. And when it goes in there, you'll see I have room between the top of the bearing and the top of the Unistrut for bolts or things like that. If you buy the trolleys 
for the Unistrut rails, the bearings are a little bit bigger and you're going to have almost no clearance to use bolts. You'd have to hang your Unistrut by the outside with some clamps. So I wanted to screw mine directly to the ceiling, so that's why I built these trolleys. Let me show you how I made them. The first thing I needed to do was enlarge some of the holes. I went to 2164 for where the roll pins are going to go through and the bolts on the bottom of the bracket. The width of this unistrut on the inside, which is what we're concerned with, is an inch and three eighths. So I need to make those roll pins so that they're an inch and three eighths long. Unfortunately, I could only find roll pins that were an inch and a half, so I am going to have to take the time to make these shorter. This little hand vise or jeweler's clamp is really great for holding on to small parts like this. Just put whatever you want to hold in one end, stick the wedge in the other end, and give it a whack on the workbench, and it's really going to hold on tight to whatever you put in there. That's not going anywhere. When you go at this with the grinder to shorten it, you can see this thing's really holding on to it. It's way better than vice grips. You could cut these down with a hacksaw or some other method. I just happen to have a bench grinder, so decided to use that. So here's how I put these together. I took these 3 8 nuts that I'm using as spacers. I did ream them out to 2164 so they'd slide on a little bit easier. But you put one on either side of the bracket, then take the bearings and set them in place. And they're going to need to be pressed on. You could tap them on with a hammer, but I'm using the vise. And I have my tripod set up right next to my vise. And it's really awkward reaching around it, which is part of the reason why I'm doing this whole build. So I can get shots like this a little easier. So you just slowly crank down the vise and it'll squeeze those bearings right onto the roll pins and just do this for all the brackets. I'm gonna need eight of these for my project. They're all finished and check them all out. They all fit and work great. So once I take one of these and put it into the unit strut that's on the ceiling, I have to attach it here. I'm gonna use a 5 16 bolt and a washer and come through there. It's gonna go through the hole that I made a little bit bigger. Another washer and a nut. These two pieces are going to run perpendicular to the unistrut that's already on the ceiling, but I can't put them up just yet. I'm a little concerned that when I put these up, when I go to move it back and forth, they're going to rack a little bit. So I'm just going to cut some plywood and attach it to these to make sure these stay parallel as I'm moving it back and forth. To build the carrier, the first thing I need to do is get a piece of plywood and cut it square. This is where I'm going to attach my camera to eventually. So just marking it, getting my little uh, circular saw so I can cut this thing. And I'm going to need two pieces of plywood for this. The larger piece is going to roll back and forth and the smaller piece will be the bottom of the Lazy Susan. need to get a straight edge and find the center of this. So it'll make lining up my Lazy Susan a lot easier. So I'm going to make my X go from corner to corner so I have a good reference point for lining everything up. Whenever you're installing a Lazy Susan, there's a spot where you need to mark and drill a hole. And this is so you can put the screws through to the other side so the two pieces can be attached together. And I'm also going to drill a hole in the center of this piece. I'm going to put a bolt in here because I'm thinking that this thing might spin a little too easily. So I'm going to put a bolt in here. That way I can uh, put some tension on the other piece if I need to. So I'm using a little threaded insert here, putting that in the middle. And then I'll run a bolt into the center of it. 
where I'll use that to put some friction on the other piece if I need it. These holes here are going to be for some T-nuts so I can make adapter plates and swap them out easily if I need to. Now I'm just going to take my bottom piece and knock the corners off just so it looks a little bit better and you know cut down on wind resistance stuff like that. And then of course I'm going to sand down the edges of this just so I don't get splinters later when I'm attaching things to it or spinning it around. These holes here that I'm drilling on the corner, this is where I'm going to bolt the trolleys to. And you want to take your time when you line these up and mark them because they need to be the same distance apart from each other. And here's that bolt that I put in earlier that I'm just going to put a nut and a wing nut on it and jam these together. So that way if I need to I can reach over onto the top and just spin it down so the head of that bolt will ride against the lower piece of plywood and give me some resistance if it's spinning too easily. Again, it's going to be really important that these are really parallel to each other. That's why I put some screws in and I'm just double checking to make sure my distances are the same. And now I can put the trolley into the two tracks. Slides in nice and easy. So good so far. Now I'll take those pieces of plywood that I cut earlier and put some bolts in them just to keep the spacing right. And this is going to keep it from racking later on once I get everything all tightened up. Since I was installing this by myself, I needed to figure out a way to hold one end of it up in the air while I was screwing and bolting the other end together. So I just grabbed these carabiners and I took them and hooked them onto the trolleys on one side and then that way I could lift up the other side and get that one bolted up and then come back to this side and bolt this side in. I had to make a slight modification to the way I attached the lower rail to the upper rail and that's the trolleys coming down and when I would push it back and forth it would get jammed up so what I did was I put a bolt through from the bottom put a nut here tightened it up and then a washer another washer up top and a lock nut but I left this lock nut just a little bit loose and that allows this trolley to pivot slightly so it can't get jammed in the track. I guess this unistrut isn't exactly straight. This worked out way better than I could have imagined. Um, it's going to be really helpful when I finally build the camera arm and then I can use this to move it around wherever I need in the shop. So I was looking around the shop for something to put on the track and I grabbed the shop vac and threw it up there. And now I'm thinking that's not such a bad place for it to be. I can have it there when I'm sanding and I don't have to worry about the hose being in the way or dragging across the workbench. 
One of the things I did when I built this is I put T-nuts on the plywood that's attached to the Lazy Susan. So I can just take those four eye bolts out and swap out any kind of attachment that I want up there. If I don't want to have my camera up there, I could put whatever else. If you found this interesting, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way when I do build the camera arm for this, you're not going to miss it. Thanks for watching.